Hi everyone, welcome to my cellar, my basement, our food storage. I have had so, so many requests to film this since we moved seven months ago and it's just taken time to get the bits and pieces all put together and if you all saw my last cellar tour that was in our previous house this house is very different with a very different basement it's much smaller and this is an old farmhouse so you're gonna see some old walls and it's just a little bit of a different feel it's got the old beams above it also if you hear horses in the background it's my horse and buggy neighbors on their way home or if you hear a hound dog it's another neighbor's dog off in the distance, so I'm sorry. I've had a lot of sounds going on today, and I just decided, you know what? I'm gonna go for it. It's just the sounds of where we live. So as it goes with most cellar tours, um, the lighting is a little bit difficult. I'm gonna do my very best to turn on all the lights in here so that you can see as good as possible. And our cellar does have a entrance an outdoor entrance and that's actually what's right behind me here um, there is a doorway that you can walk in from ground level to walk into this cellar however the rest of it is i would say mostly underground and i do like to keep touch on how cool it actually is in here most of the time even in the summertime if you walk in here it feels like it's air conditioned so it definitely has a nice cool feeling which is what you want anyways i'm not going to ramble on we will just get started all right i'm going to give you an overview from the outside entrance and just kind of walk you through before i do a detailed tour so when you walk right in the door here my husband built me these awesome shelves and I still have wiggle room we are at the end of the summer season and in the midst of fall season so this is probably the fullest these shelves will be throughout the year because it is kind of the end of harvest and canning season here I just have some extra jars stored on the side that will all go into my broths and canned meats which I'll talk about here in a little bit but here's just an overview of this shelf and then I have it kind of divided into two separate sections so that's one section and then the second section kind of goes out that way so I'm gonna walk down here without making you guys dizzy. <laughs> um, but here I just have some of the wire rack shelves and all of this shelving, including what my husband built, is mobile. It's not um, permanent shelving, so it can be moved around and however I want it to be. I'm sorry if it's a little extra bright. I did have to put on all the lights to really be able to see everything because we try to keep everything as low light as possible because that is how you best store food. Now this is the other side and like I said I kind of have it divided into two sections. That is the stairs that go up to our house and then this is this side of the cellar okay i'm starting on the canning shelf with the end that's closest to the external door and then we'll work our way in and we'll kind of work our way around the cellar again if you hear noises i'm sorry this is a really old refrigerator that's down here and it makes a lot of funny little noises but we don't hear them upstairs and it still does a great job at being an extra refrigerator so i am actually not going to go into great detail of certain items that I really talked a lot about in my first tour. So if there's something I skip over that you might want more info on, go watch the tour from our other house. You may find more info there. I just don't want to be super repetitive. I do have a lot of things that I tackled this year that I did not do last year. So I will talk about those things a bit more than the things that I went through before. Up here I have peaches and pears and I did actually do a video on how I do my peaches. And I will leave all the videos linked below that I have filmed the process of how I've canned a bunch of this stuff in case you all want to know how to do it. So this whole section right here and I kind of categorize things in different sections down the shelf but this whole section right here is mostly fruit and I don't do a lot of crazy stuff with my fruit. I do a lot of simple canning with my fruit. These here are some cherries that we really like to get from Aldi 
and so I still have some of those left next year I might try to do my own cherries in this way I do have some cherries in the freezer that I'm going to show you all how I'm going to do cherry pie filling sometime soon so definitely stick around for that if you want to know how to make your own cherry pie filling these are mandarin oranges here and then down here I have the start of my jams and jellies they do go down a little bit further this is blueberry and strawberry jam and then here I have canned berries and you all know I talked a lot about that in my first tour but I just have canned blueberries and canned strawberries here on the next shelves down underneath of what I just showed you I have apple butter oh we love apple butter especially this time of year going into fall it is so good with cottage cheese and of course on your toast in the morning and many other ways also on Scrapple. If you know what Scrapple is, comment below if you like Scrapple. We love Scrapple around here. This is apple pie filling. I have a little bit of berry sauce left. There's a couple jars in here. That's something I had done last year and my daughters absolutely loved it. It's something that I will probably do next year because this was not an applesauce year for me. So this applesauce is from what is left from last year. I do a lot of things every other year. So every other year I'll do enough for two years and then I swap out if that makes sense. So it's just the way that I prefer to preserve food. So down here on the bottom, this is all actually gonna get shuffled because today, this morning, I canned about 28 quart of white grape juice and I've never done that before but this is my Concord grape juice again last year I did enough for two years so we I didn't need to do the purple grapes this year but I decided to try white and I'm so anxious to see how my family likes it we love grape juice especially in the winter season whenever you make your own grape juice you can always count on those grapes to give you a lot of vitamin C I have a little bit of apple juice here left from last year and then this is all my raw honey I get from a local farmer and I get it in a five gallon bucket and then I just put it into quart jars because it's a little easier to take up to my kitchen that way and then I have a little bit of maple syrup here but I actually have a five gallon bucket of maple syrup that I'm going to be canning and I'm going to say canning because it's not technically canning I will show that in a video sometime soon if you all want to see how to buy maple syrup in bulk and put it in its the individual containers okay moving over to the next section on the two upper shelves I have diced tomatoes I did loads and loads and loads of tomatoes this year and I'm so happy with it I know that it all has my good pink Himalayan salt that has lots of good extra minerals and there are no additives in all of my tomato products if you guys didn't realize this I'm gonna tell you I didn't even realize this until last year I did not know how many additives they can put into tomato products to make them thicker, to make them cheaper, and you may not be just using tomato sauce when you get a can of tomato sauce. There can be a lot of other things in that can, so definitely check out your labels and you might be surprised. So I made a lot, I don't know if you can see how much is here, it goes all the way back, a lot of tomato sauce and it's just cooked down and it's nice and thick and I can use that in recipes. I can make whatever I want to out of that. I really love having tomato sauce around. And then down here, I don't know if you can see, but there's a large section right here of marinara sauce. So this is just something I use as spaghetti sauce, pizza sauce. Um, if we want to dip cheese sticks in something, this is what we're going to dip it in. So if you all remember the video that I did make this in, I made it in pints, but I also, and I think in the video I showed how I made it in these little single serve containers because my husband loves to grab a cheesesteak sometimes on the way home from a local pizza place and he likes my marinara a whole lot so he'll come home and he'll dip his cheesesteak in this it just works great for like if we need a little pizza made or something it's not an entire jar that goes to waste and then over here I know you can probably not see it very well I have all of my jars of tomato paste this was such a process if you've ever made tomato paste you know how many tomatoes it takes and also how long it takes 
It is such a process, but I'm so excited to have it. I'm excited to know that there's no additives in this as well. All right, I gotta get down here kind of low just because of how the camera angle works for you all to see it. So this is the next section. This has a lot of interesting things in it. Right next to the apple butter, we've got grape jelly. I have lots and lots of that and that is one of our favorites. Next to that, I have my canned lemon juice. I showed you all how to do that. I love making lemonade with this and using this in marinades and other things like that. So the next two things kind of go together. This is mushroom broth, and you might wonder why would you can mushroom broth? Well, all I need is a few other ingredients and this will be mushroom soup, cream of mushroom soup. So it's a super quick way to make a very healthy cream of mushroom soup. Right next to that is my canned, home canned mushrooms and they are something we love. I'm actually running low on them. I figured once I hit another good sale of mushrooms, I'm gonna have to make up a lot more because it's something that we use so often. They can be used on pizza, of course, but in omelets and many, many other things. Next to that, I have my huge stock of pickled beets. We love pickled beet eggs, the pink eggs. If you ever see them in the store, that's how they're made. And so I always like to have a lot of pickled beets on hand. And then I also have some pickled beet juice or brine. And that's something I can add to the eggs as well to be able to make those. I decided for this bottom shelf to switch positions a little bit. I thought it might be easier for you all to see and a little easier for me to get down here and show you. So these here are pickled jalapenos. We love those on tacos and lots of other things. This is my huge stash of sweet pepper relish, one of our absolute favorite things that I make. And we go through lots and lots and lots of it. I'm always looking for a good sale on peppers. This is mustard relish. We like pickles and relish a lot in our house, okay? <laughs> this is a sweet pickle relish. Next to it, I have a dill relish. Next to that, we've got dill spears. And then next to that, I have got my bread and butter pickles. And we just love having all of those special spreads and pickles. So here is this whole section that I just showed you. I thought I would just kind of pan over it so you all can see this whole side. And then we'll move over to the other side. So this is the other side and they are the same size. My husband just made me two of them on top. I often put empty jars, but as you can see, we've got some gaps up there, lots of space to take and eat everything and then do it all again next year. <laughs> okay, starting on the top of this shelf. So again, I like variety and I tend to lean more into doing a variety of things instead of just tons of one thing. Um, unless, of course, I'm doing it for two years, it really does seem like a lot. So I have some canned asparagus over here, and in our house, we've pretty well voted that these taste like green beans. I think I might have mentioned that in my other um, cellar tour, and it's just, they're just really good. You can heat them up pretty quick. Here I've got home canned pumpkin, and I actually want to do some more of this because I'm using it now that we're kind of in a fall season, and I know that I will be using probably the rest of that this year. So before the fall ends, I think I'm gonna do that. Um, so you may see me do that in a video. This is just some canned cabbage. It's really easy to pull out just to make a stir fry or something like that if I'm in a real rush and I don't wanna cut up some of my fresh. This is some diced sweet potato and this here is just something I get out sometimes and we just mash it up with a fork, heat it up, put butter on it and you've got quick sweet potato, especially if I don't have any that are fresh. Next to that we've got green beans and carrots and carrots is something I don't can a lot of. Um, I'll use them in soups and stuff like that but we just don't care for the taste of canned carrots as a side dish. I'll just kind of use these in other things. Okay, bumping down to the next shelf. Here, this is one, and again, one of my favorite things that I make. We use it so often, and I've raved about it a lot in my recipe videos and things, but that is my canned onions and peppers. We use the broth a lot to make rice and things like that, but they're just so quick and simple to pull out for omelets, 
pull out for a cheesesteak, um, put in a casserole, really anything. But the broth from this, so good. These here I made with you all in a video and I just love these. Again, the juice from this could be, make some wonderful things. But these I have made on my husband's smoker. So they are roasted red peppers but made on a smoker grill. And oh, they are so delicious. There's even some char in there. Just makes them wonderful. So all of this is home canned barbecue beans. I made these in a video with you all, so I'll be sure to link them below. But they're just so convenient to have ready to go. And the recipe that I used is based off of my husband's grandmother's recipe. It's one that we really love. And it's something that I like to do in the winter time or like whenever I'm not doing other things. It's a good off season thing to can. Down below everything I just showed you are two things that are absolute staples in our house. This is my home canned corn. I do it in an Amish method and I showed it to you recently of how you do it. You put a slice of tomato in the top. You can see all the slices of tomato sitting in the top of the jars. And I did 550 ear this year. I don't know if it's gonna be enough. We've already been using so much of it. It was, you know, out here further, um, but I'll see how it goes. My husband said next year he'll help me do a lot more if we really do blow through this. We will see. Here is my home canned salsa. We did a salsa day with my family and it was so fun and it was just, oh, it's so delicious. It reminds me a lot of a fresh salsa and it's just beats the store salsa. <laughs> and then here is our other staple and that is canned potatoes because we can just make those into fried potatoes. I can make potato salad with them. I can make breakfast potatoes. We use those very heavily in our house. And that's also something I tend to do whenever it's cold outside. I can go get a 50 pound bag of potatoes and just can up a bunch of them. Okay, so this is my most empty area of my cellar right now and that is my meats. So I have canned chicken up here, pork here, and beef down here. And that is something that I focus on more in the winter months. And we are running very low on a lot of it. And I'm excited to get my crock pot rolling or my roaster rolling and get some good home canned shredded chicken on the shelf. That is something I use all the time. It's so convenient and it tastes so delicious. So next to that up here is my chicken broth and I have lots of that. I tend to use it more in the pint size than I do in the quart size. So I think this winter I probably will only be doing pint sizes because I'll have some of the quart left unless I'm doing like a big broth soup or something like that. And below that down here I have some canned soups and canned tomato soup is something I always do a lot of during the summer and i've got some chili next to that and like i said some canned ground pork here and then below what i just showed you i've got my beef bone broth that's over here so chicken is up here you can always see the color difference and then the beef is down here and that's so healthy to add to soups or make your rice with this here is chunked beef that is canned. I don't even have any ground beef left um, from last year. And then this down here is something that everyone asked me to film and I just haven't done it yet. That is canned butter. And that's just something that I like to have on hand and it lasts for five years. So it's really nice. And then next to that is just two lonely jars of canned beans that my sweet neighbor gave me and they're just some I think they are some kidney beans okay so panning from the canned goods shelf here I have a bag of red potatoes I have been trying to just get a big bag every other month or so for baked potatoes and mashed potatoes because I do not use my canned potatoes for that. Back behind this shelf, there is a ledge that runs along the cellar the whole way around. So I just have extra boxes for jars and that sort of thing. So the shelf here on the end, I have a lot of just oddly sized jars, things I don't always use. I've got some swing top bottles, some swing top jars, and on the top there, these are half gallon jars. And then I've got some gallon jars. 
these here I'm going to be using to store some things from my freeze dryer as I learn how to use it a bit better. So that's why I have those up there. On the bottom of this shelf right here, I've got my jugs of apple cider vinegar and then just white vinegar and then my avocado oil. That's the main oil we use in our house. And then just like some olive oil and some coconut oil down there as well. Here in the center, I have some freezer containers. I really love those. You can see right now it's 63 in here, but that's actually a little bit warm. It was a lot cooler. I just have had the door open and was doing some cleaning in here today so right now that's the temp in here and um, then next to that I've got just some freezer meal containers and I get asked a lot for the link for these so I will definitely go ahead and link them below they have lids and they come in packs of four I believe so that's really nice on top of there I've got my bread bags and some of this stuff is placed very strategically so that my daughters can come down and get it and up here I kind of came up with this little system of using these elastic things they I will link them um, they are like some sort of a bungee cord type thing that you would strap something onto a vehicle with or something like that but I just use two of them I do one from that corner around and then a second one around the other way and it holds these mylar bags so nice so up here i just have my pastas and then here's just some random things like popcorn chickpeas um black beans and then i do have some powdered milk back there on the off chance i need some milk and i don't want to run to a local farm or anything to get it and so down here is a lot of just like condiments and other things if i find something as at a good deal or on sale i usually buy a case of it that's just how i do and the store that i do most of my shopping at they give me a discount if i buy a whole case of something so that is why i often make sure i've got a little wiggle room for something extra to come on in so these are just normal things like peanut butter and ketchup and mayo and barbecue sauce and just things like that. I frequently make dairy-free recipes so this is all canned coconut cream that I use for in different things like that. This whole section here I think I'm going to go ahead and label just because I have them kind of divided out how I want them now. So on top of here I've got some Ziploc bags and some saran wrap and things like that. It's just a nice little spot to stick all of that. So I'm gonna lift you up in there. <laughs> you can see there's a lot of baking things in here. So I've got cocoa powder and shredded coconut and chocolate chips. And this is pudding for the pudding cookies I make. If you know, you know, if you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then this here, I personally eat a lot of gluten-free and then there's some other members in our household that do too. So these are gluten-free pastas and then that is a special rice that I eat a lot. This is also specialty items and so is this. Just like stevia sweetened chocolate chips and things like that. And there, here is some condiments that I eat. I just have to eat a very special diet for my health. So I just have to keep those kinds of things around for myself. In here is also just a lot of odds and ends, just things that I may not keep around as like a huge stock, but it I bought it and tried it, I'm trying it or something like that, you know. So in here I've got a few more baking things, some raisins, some um, molasses. Here I've got some cornstarch. Another quick tip I'll give you is I never buy buttermilk because you usually only need a little bit of it for a recipe. And powdered buttermilk works just as good as the fresh. So I like to keep that on hand. Down here is what I like to call our snack area. Um, like I said, we have to have some gluten-free eaters in our house. So when I find a good deal on certain snacks, I will buy them. These here are like some gluten-free crackers. These are like a gluten-free Oreo. And these big black crates, um, I actually washed some of them out today. They are actually from a produce auction somewhere locally. Someone was selling a bunch of them. So I decided to go ahead and grab them. They just work great for stuff like this. So we just kind of keep this in rotation. It's not always the same things. These are chips. I like to have around and then down here we've got more like tortilla chips for salsa 
and I always keep Ritz crackers and graham crackers on hand. They're just so versatile and with soup, of course, for the Ritz crackers or if we're gonna make like a little Lunchable for a packed lunch, we can do that. And the graham crackers work for a lot of different things and desserts and stuff like that. So love having those around. The next shelf is kind of a shelf I'm working on right now. Sorry if the lights are all really bright. So the top is all freeze dried things. These are my freeze dried peaches that I just, oh, they are so good. And then I've got the freeze dried strawberries, blueberries, cherries. And then this is actually cauliflower rice that's freeze dried. And then this is all spices, either spices that I freeze dried or spices that I buy in bulk. And then I just put them in two containers like this. I kind of have everything written on the top and then I just can look for what I need. Again, same with this. This is a lot of herbs and even some yarrow that we harvested from around our property that we live on and just other things that have been dried that I like to use. This here, I just keep little spices, whether it's stuff for canning, like that's mustard seed that I would use in my pickles, or like sometimes we like certain spice blends. I know that I talk about this one a whole, whole lot. Anytime I get to Costco, I always like to grab a couple of these. They're, it's so good on just everything um so i just kind of have this bin that corrals all of those things in its place this shelf here there's a few dried items that just aren't up there but this shelf here is stuff that's either for a project or needs to be put into a better container they're just bulk items that i've bought of different things that i need to put away this whole bin has dried beans in it I don't know if I'm gonna put them in anything or I'm just gonna leave them in there. Dried beans are so hearty. This is Redmond's Real Salt. That is the salt I love. And that is what I like to buy it in, is in the bucket form when I can find it. Then I've got baking soda and some wine that's honestly been around forever. I just keep saying I'm gonna make a wine sauce with it. So <laughs> that's why I hang on to it. Okay, going around to this corner here. I've got these two crates and we have some different crates that kind of float around in here because I do use them in my freezers sometimes too. Um, but I got some spaghetti squash the other day. So that's currently what's in it. Sweet potatoes might go in them um, and that sort of thing. And I think I have two more that I can stack on top of there somewhere. All right, so coming to this side of the basement. So this whole entire section, and I know the last time I did a cellar tour, you all were really, really interested in this. And it's something that I don't share a lot about because I'm not necessarily an expert, but I do my own <laughs> learning and digging. And that is all of my herbal tinctures. Um, I use a lot of herbal remedies and making my own sort of things for our house. And so there's a bunch of tinctures that I have made, just little odds and ends. Sorry, it's so bright. That light is right up there. And then this bin here um, actually has my Mylar bags and stuff like that in it. It was just a good thing to put up there against the light because I didn't want too many other things <laughs> against the light. I have my citrus juicer up there. And then here you can kind of see an overview. I did alphabetize these not that long ago, but they've still kind of gotten a little mixed up, but it just has a bunch of my dry herbs and there's lots and lots of different kinds in here just for different blends, things I use in teas, um, tinctures, like I said. There's a little bit of alcohol because that is the thing that I usually use in the base of my tinctures. Um, and yeah, just different things. Like this is a whole entire jar of dried elderberries. I have rose hips back there. I wanna make some syrups with. Um, this is like castle soap. And that is another thing that you can use kind of like alcohol um, to pull out the extracts of the different herbs. And then I just have a big case of organic green tea there. This here is something I'm really excited to keep sharing with you all it's just so new to me and that is the freeze dryer I have been using it for some different things there are some things I would rather can than freeze dry I will say that off the bat but I still am really excited with the results I've been getting from it and I can't wait to share more things with it so on this shelf I just have trays for the freeze dryer 
um, my sealer for the bag. These are actually my lids for my jars. So I've got wide mouth and regular mouth and I reuse lids. I've talked about that a couple of times. So they stay just in those old butter buckets. And then I've got new boxes of lids here. I've got my vacuum sealer in here for freezer things. This is just a super random odds and end bins here. This here, I think I have some things from the kitchen I wanna move down here, just to give me a little more space in my kitchen cabinets. Down here on the bottom is my pressure canner, my stock pot, and a water bath canner. And I, my other one, I have two of those. The other one's upstairs since I was doing the grape juice today. And then over here, like I said, sits the freeze dryer and lots of little knickknacks. Down here is my roaster. These are rings. So I have uh, large mouth rings and regular mouth rings for the jars because I do not store them with the rings on. Again, I've talked about why I don't do that before. If you all want more on that, just go head back videos. This bucket here is for the freeze dryer. It's for the drain. And then over here under the steps, we just have a few things. This cart has just a lot of cleaning products, um, lighters, uh, light bulbs, mouse traps, those sorts of things. This here is my extra laundry soap. And then these here just hold random stuff like we've got duffel bags, snow pants, extra hangers, and that one's empty. We got the mop bucket there. There's a case of sparkling water I need to take upstairs with me. Moving from the steps area, this is just all things for the house. But beside that, I have some extra crates and tubs. These are things I use whether we're going to pick up local apples. It's just kind of a practice that if you're gonna pick up something locally, if you can take your own containers and not use theirs, that is one of the best things you can do for that farmer. Um, this is actually paint here for the house. <laughs> I have all of my dry goods and this is just the best way it's worked for me to store these. This is my huge bucket of the maple syrup that I need to put into smaller containers. But I love these lids I can open from the top. I can leave them linked below, but they seal so well. And basically what I have in here is mostly flour, rolled oats, and sugar. Those are just kind of staples. I think I have a few other things like, I think there is a bucket of regular salt down here. Sometime I'd like to try some meat curing with salt. We think, I think that it would be really neat to try. And then I also have a bucket of bags of powdered sugar. I have tried to make my own powdered sugar, but my family does not like the texture of it. So I just buy bags from the store and we use them because it's nice and cool temperature down here. It stores perfectly just like that and we can grab the bags as we need them. Okay, so here you get to see a little bit of the old farmhouse walls and how they look. So we have three freezers here. Somebody was asking me in a video recently that I showed a clip of me getting something out of one of these freezers, what the tape was all about. This was just an idea that came to me I don't know, a handful of months ago. And I decided I'm gonna go ahead and do it because I'm terrible at remembering what all is in each freezer. So anytime I put something in the freezer, I generally mark it on these. I can take it off. It's not gonna leave a nasty residue. It's literally painter's tape and a Sharpie. And then I just put it on the freezer and I know what's in it. <laughs> it's just a quick, easy system. I haven't really looked in these before I'm going to show you. So who knows what can be in them, but this one has a lot of veggies in it um, and some chicken. And then this one here is our beef freezer and we're actually getting ready to pick up a quarter of a beef um, in the next couple days and I have got to get this whole mess out of here. So this is the last of my tomatoes I had gotten um, to do I don't know what with yet. I was thinking maybe some more tomato sauce, something like that. But I gotta get this out of here because we are going to be putting our beef in here and we're gonna need all the space we can get in that one. This one here has a lot of random stuff in it. It has some deer hot dogs and pork and bacon and just different things. And this freezer is a good example of how I often organize them. Now, like with the beef, I have to take all of these containers out because it doesn't really work. I don't have enough space to stack all the beef we get but I generally have these guys and I found these on Amazon. If I can find the link for them, I will link them below for you. So I have two of this style crate. 
So there's one underneath of it stacked on top of each other. So I can get these two out and then lift that one out and I can get to what's in the bottom. Okay. <laughs> and then I also have this guy here, which came with the freezer and underneath of that is a stack of stuff that goes all the way down. I'm sorry if you hear our dog. She's either barking at me or she's barking at my husband outside, one or the other. So that is what is in that freezer. Next to the freezer and between the freezer and the fridge is a bunch of buckets and these pretty much all have rice in them. Um, the only one that doesn't, I think, is the cornmeal. The rest are rice. It's just, um, I like storing my rice in a smaller bucket like that. Rice can get really, really heavy. And then this is my refrigerator that I'm so thankful for, even though it's old and loud. Um, we do use this freezer part here. I guess if you guys wanna see, cause you always wanna see everything. I've got a bunch of chickens in here I'm getting ready to cook up. I had found on a really good deal. I'm kind of waiting because I'm picking up chickens also from a local farmer as well. And then this here is the refrigerator. And I found a really good deal on cases of drinkable yogurts that aren't loaded with sugar. So we got a bunch of those. I've got my almond milk. I grocery shop pretty much once a month. And so I get cases of almond milk and eggs and different things like that. This here is my avocados. If you keep avocados in a jar of water, they will keep for five weeks or can, I should say. Obviously it's not a guarantee, but I have kept mine for five weeks like that, opened it up and it was perfect on the inside. So <laughs> this is just where I keep lots of just odds and ends. So my battery is about to die, but thank you guys so much for watching. And if you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments below. I love chatting with you all down there. And go ahead and check out my channel. It's so much more than the tour of my cellar. I have lots of videos on how I do all of this and I'll be posting a lot more. And of course, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. I'd love it if you joined my channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.